My name is Connie Wood. I moved to Dixon and Budo in July of 1969. I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and moved to Dixon from California. How I got here is uh, kind of roundabout but interesting. My husband and I were living in a camper in the Redwoods in California, up above Palo Alto in an area called La Honda. We were lucky enough to find a place to park that camper. We were trying to live on nothing. Uh, it wasn't exactly living on nothing, but we, get, we were giving it a try. Tom was working for the Whole Earth Catalog. His job was to drive the Whole Earth Catalog's truck store. Everybody knows the Whole Earth Catalog. It's the Bible of the counterculture movement. He would go off to work every day, and I would deal with living in the Redwoods, which means it was either raining or it was dripping from the rain that had just happened. So it was very, very beautiful to be in those trees, but very, very damp. And if you opened a cupboard and you hadn't worn a pair of shoes for about three days, they had green fuzz all over them. Any event that was going on in California, usually the Whole Earth Catalog was invited to it, and they would show up with this truck and flip down the side of the box that was on the back of this truck, and there would be an exhibit of all the things that the Whole Earth Catalog featured, such as books on how to have your baby at home, how to build your own home, how to make adobe bricks, how to build a geodesic dome, how to grind flour, and there were things in the truck, such as flour grinders, axes, hatchets, all the things you needed to have to go back to the land. Tom and I were invited to go to a dome conference in La Luz, New Mexico, to take the Whole Earth Catalog truck store there. The dome conference was run by Steve Baer. Uh, he was putting up prototypes of geodesic domes, describing how useful they were, how easy they were, how healthy they were. And the truck store parked in the yard of the Dome Conference and had their exhibits of their books and also sold catalogs. During the day, there was light snow falling. It was early spring. The clouds cleared up and the sun came out. We were sitting then in the hot sun. The clouds came over again and it rained very lightly. Then the clouds went away and a big rainbow appeared in the sky. We thought we had died and gone to heaven. After living in the Redwoods, where it was exactly the same every single day, we had seen an exhibit of four different weather patterns in one day. And it's something we would never forget. We went back to California, and we're still living in the Redwoods. And our friends, Paul and Nancy, who were sort of partners of ours in California, came onto the land that we were living on with their camper and their seven kids. They had been in uh, Mexico for six months, living on a beach. So they said to us, okay, what's next? Because obviously the, all of us were going to go do something different. So Tom said, uh, well, we were just in New Mexico, and it was beautiful. And Paul said, well, I know somebody who lives in New Mexico. His name is Monty, and he lives in someplace called Buda, New Mexico. We'll go out there and check it out and let you know if it's great, and you can come out too. So they left one of their kids with us because they had seven kids and we had two, and so we were trying to even it up a little bit. So their little boy, Scott, stayed with us. Paul and Nancy came out to Embudo. They loved it. They communicated with us in some fashion. Right now I have no idea how they communicated with us because we didn't have phones. Or I don't even remember if we had a mailbox or anything. We first camped on the ba banks of the Rio Grande while we looked for a house, we found an uh, abandoned adobe that we could move into. We moved into it. It was on the highway that runs between Santa Fe and Taos. There was a stretch of big yard in front of the adobe. And uh, what we had parked around the building was uh, a Volkswagen bus that was painted camouflage, two flatbed trucks. We had taken the campers off. And a lot of kids were in the yard, of course, our kids, and dogs and chickens and some goats that we'd gotten. So anybody coming down that highway could see that it was probably a hippie bunch that lived down there. We looked about as hippie as could be. The only thing we didn't have were prayer flags hanging, <laughs> hanging, out, hanging out the window. Um, at that time, it was kind of like the hippie trail. People were going back and forth between Santa Fe and Taos looking for communes, looking for other hippies, looking for cheap land. My friend Nancy and I counted one time 56 days in a row that people had crashed at our place. They would walk down the driveway, they'd be hitchhiking down the road, they'd see our scene down there, they'd walk down the driveway, 
and we'd hear their story. They couldn't get a ride, or they got a, a scary ride from Velarde, or their car broke down in Espanola, or their car broke down in Taos. And we were, of course, we were, it, it was the hippie days. It was, of course, people could come and stay on the couch or whatever till they got their truck or whatever it was together or got the nerve to hit the road again. One of the visitors was a couple named Mario and Francine. They were terrific. Mario was dealing with the car. Francine came into the house. Thank you very much for letting me stay. And she immediately starts repairing all the pillows and, and sweeping the floor and washing the dishes and helping us with the kids and hanging clothes on the clothesline. So we were just fine with, with Francine. That We were in no hurry to get rid of her. And um, then there were couples who came down and uh, one group uh, brought a dog named Denver, a very nice dog. We all went somewhere and while we were gone, Denver ate all our chickens. Uh, they were not particularly welcome. So it was it was kind of an exciting time. We had the house divided up into, there was two different adobe rooms, really, connected by a kind of a portal. One room we used as a kitchen and living room. The other room we turned into a kid's room. Paul built little cubicles, six cubicles. Tom and I kept Kiva, our baby, in the camper with us. We slept in our camper, Paul and Nancy slept in their camper with their two youngest children. And the other room had the six cubicles where the older children slept. At night, we would have dinner. We would let the kids play for a while. Then we'd walk over there and put all the kids into their cubicles. They'd go to bed. And then then in the morning, they would all come over for breakfast, of course. So one morning, one of the kids sitting around the table, one of the kids said, gee, that was a really funny story that guy told us last night. And we said, what guy? And they said, oh, well, after you left us, these two guys came down the driveway and knocked on the door and we let them in and they slept on the floor. They brought their sleeping bags and they slept on the floor and they told us really funny stories. And we said, well, where are these guys? And he said, oh, they already left. They walked up the road and put their thumbs out. So what the point of all that is, it was kind of loose. <laughs> People came and went and dropped by and um, the kids were fine. They thought it was normal for people just to drop in and sleep on the floor and leave in the morning. I learned how to do a few things by living this life. I took outhouses for granted. I learned to cook on a wood stove. I learned to sew on a treadle sewing machine, wash clothes in a bucket, milk a goat, uh, made goat milk, and learned how to can and make ketchup and jam and jelly. And I wouldn't trade this life for anything.